meeting of the Perry Township Board of Trustees for July 13th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. as we return back in person. If everyone would please stand for the pledge of allegiance. Just a couple quick housekeeping items before we get started with our first meeting back. We are being recorded on Zoom. We are also available by phone in, and we are obviously live. Welcome back to everybody. Um, we're going to ask that any questions that aren't addressed during our business conducting uh, be held until the end. And if anyone has signed up or requested, just let us know. If you have something to ask during a topic, we welcome that within certain limitations. Um, because it's our first meeting back and there's a lot to talk about, in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 3335-1-01F, Robert's Rules of Order states that we can have a temporary Sergeant at Arms appointed for any meetings. So I've asked Sergeant Waymeyer to be our Sergeant at Arms for the evening, just in case we need one. Will you accept that role? Yeah, yeah thank you. Okay. Um, and with that, we will move on to our consent agenda of a whole bunch of minutes. Um, do we have a motion to accept minutes from special meeting June 4th? Work session June 5th, trustees meeting June 8th, special meetings June 11th and 22nd. Mm -hmm. oh, the bills are the same? Can we do that? Okay. Then the bills also from June 1st to the 30th. With the electronic warrants 91 2021 through 124, are those transactions? Those are electronic. Electronic. Okay. And the checks that were dispersed were 36257 through 36341. Okay. I'll second. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Wynn? Yes. Trustee Winner? Yes. Okay. Our fiscal officer report. For our June 22nd, 2021 special meeting, um, wanted to update you and let you know that the lease payment to the U.S. Bank Corp for the Conan Copier has been reallocated to the 50% police, 25% general, and 25% trash and refuge. Given the new allocation, there should be sufficient funds to complete the remaining payments for 2021 without requirement of any new warrants unless we incur any overages for use. Uh, the next area that we have been focusing on, it was discovered when I was working with the traveling clerk that there were some issues with regards to the UAN fees, um, which resulted in a new warrant being required to pay the UAN fees for the June and the remainder of 2021. Our quarterly UAN fees are $762 for a total annual cost of $3,048. On January 6th of 2021, three purchase orders were established to cover the cost of $3,048. However, on February 28th of 2021, there was a payment of $1,524 that was issued to cover the cost of billings that were not, that not paid in 2020. Due to this large payment, the purchase orders issued on January 6th were insufficient to cover the 2021 fees, so a reallocation was required and new POs have been established to cover the remaining $1,104 2021. Um, work with the traveling clerk Pranger has been completed. Overall cost of the township permits for Pranger services was $1,545. We can contract it for up to $2,400. 
So we were able to complete the additional support at $855 under budget. So that saved us a little bit there. And then the final thing that I have is requesting approval of resolution 2153 for submittal to the Montgomery County Board of Elections pertaining to the additional 2.5 mil fire slash EMS levy to be placed on the November 2nd, 2021 general election ballot. Resolution 2153 states placement of a continuous 2.5 mil additional levy for fire and EMS capital improvement needs for Perry Township. Whereas this Board of Perry Township Trustees has determined the necessity of levying a tax outside the 10 mil limitation, and whereas the ORC section 5705.19i authorizes submission of the question of the tax, and whereas the purpose of the proposed tax is for fire and emergency medical services, capital improvement needs, and is in addition to the current 2.5 mil continuous levy currently in effect, commencing tax year 2021, first due in calendar year 2022 for a period of continuous. And whereas the Board of Elections is authorized to place this levy on the ballot for the November 2nd, 2021 general election, and whereas the continuousness of this levy is essential and necessary for the continuation of fire and EMS services to the citizens of Perry Township and the general public. Whereas the Montgomery County Auditor has certified the tax valuation of Perry Township, and now let it be resolved, the Perry Township Fiscal Officer is in receipt of the County Auditor Certificate and the fiscal officer is forwarding this resolution and certificate to Montgomery County Board of Elections, ordering a placement of an additional continuous 2.5 mil fire and EMS capital improvement levy on the general election ballot on November 2nd, 2021 for fire and EMS services for Perry Township. I'll make a motion that we accept the resolution and place the fire and EMS levy on the November 2nd, 2021 ballot. Second. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Wynn? Yes. Trustee Mayors? Yes. Okay. 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 Um, Kayla, welcome to your first meeting. Thanks. Have uh, a road and cemetery report for us? Uh, yeah. It's uh, kind, of, kind of short and sweet for the moment. This uh, first one, uh, the cemetery department has had uh, one burial, one cremation this month, bringing our total of 15 burials this year. Um, for our roads, we have a, a water issue on Sheep Road. Um, we've met with Wallace with the county engineer's office. Uh, we're going to dig up the side of the road where the washout has occurred. Uh, we're going to see if, it, if it's a coupler that has come apart, right, or the uh, pipe has been crushed. Um, we go from there to fix the current issue. Uh, we may have to look into redoing the pipe uh, to be more aligned with the flow of the water from the waterway into the creek on the other side. Uh, we just finished our first round of roadside mowing uh, completed this morning. We pulled away uh, $1,277 uh, worth of scrap metal from the, from the maintenance building. Uh, for our equipment, we just had to get the John Deere mower worked on. We had to have the starter replaced and the fuel lines replaced. We just got the roadside motor back from getting a hydraulic pump replaced. Um, after I typed this up, we stopped and got the one time dump. Um, we ran a scan tool on it, the valve body stuck in, this, in that second gear. Every once in a while, kick pump back at the four. Um, that, that's a cost of $2,800 to replace the valve body. If we go that route, um, they also went $4,000 in remand uh, transmission. That may get us by. I'm getting that with the water cooler and you see that might get by for a few years until we can get the um, major budget for the one time down. Later down, maybe if we want one now, we probably cannot get one. Um, yes, he's going to work on quotes. He had to get some calls in and he's waiting on him to get back to get the exact quote. Either way. Okay. Um, and who so is that quote from? CC, sir, in Perry Township. And then 
moving forward, we have, we have a tower project coming up at the end of July on Amity Road. Uh, we're going to continue assessing the cemeteries, the equipment, roadways, and, our, and continue with the uh, shop cleanup at the main building. Has anyone said anything to you about the flooding on Kena? No. Okay. Um, there's a couple roads that when they were covered over, the drainage ditches were covered over. So I've got a couple of those I'll get with you okay. and let you know. Um, thank you, Chief Little. Uh, June stats are published onto our website. Um, reminding, reminder to everybody, our fishing derby is Sunday, uh, August the 22nd, uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at uh, the uh, Overlook Park there on Providence. Uh, after our meeting last month, uh, talking about the body worn cameras and upgrading the in car cameras, um, I got with Cherry. Uh, we sat down and reviewed the budget, and the money is in the budget for. Uh, going with the um, watch guard 4RE in car cameras that do the automatic upload and the um, body worn cameras from watch guard. Uh, so that is uh, in the budget to go ahead and uh, to move forward with. But that's something that I can get approval on uh, from the board. And those sync together, right? Yes. What was the overall cost of that? Yeah. So the Wi-Fi canopy uh, setup is $4,750. Um, the yearly uh, fee for that uh, for five years uh, is $9,072 yearly. Which gives you a total of $45,360. Forty-five thousand four hundred sixty. Forty-five thousand three hundred sixty. That's per year, right? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, for the purchase of the body and vehicle cameras for the police department at a cost of forty-five thousand three hundred sixty a year. Okay, Mayor. Yes. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Lynch? Yes. Um, Car D um, was placed on the Dove deals. Uh, Car D is the old uh, expedition that we've had out uh, in the parking lot. So all the equipment's been stripped. The lettering um, has been removed. So it's on Dove deals. And uh, the auction ends for that on Monday. I have assisted uh, Kayla Coops with the work permits and cemetery needs and updates the cemetery logs, which that's an ongoing thing that we're working on. And I came in on Friday the 9th and volunteered my time and I painted the accent wall in the lobby and cleaned up cleaned the glass and floors. So I did that because it's something that needed to be done and I did it because I wanted to. So that's done. Good luck, um, man. Thank you. Um, the third quarter trash bills were sent out on June 30th, 2021. We had 1,294 trash bills sent out. As of today, we've had 411 residents that have paid their third quarter trash bill. In zoning, since the last uh, Board of Trustee meeting, I have issued seven barn permits, and I have four pending permits, one barn, two single-family homes, and one shed that I'll be finishing those up here soon. Um, we have a DCA hearing scheduled for July 22nd, 2021, that will be held here um, at the township at 7 p.m. 
And I'm also uh, scheduling a BZA hearing for August 12th that will also be here, held here at 7. And the last thing I have is that I will be scheduling nuisance abatement hearings with the trustees very soon. We've got some issues that we need to have addressed. That's all I have. So moving into our trustees reports, I'm starting with mine. I attended the trustees engineers dinner at the Montgomery County Engineers Club and had a very nice long conversation with Paul Gruner, who has agreed to look one more time at the intersection of Old Dayton and Ripple Johnsville and see what, if anything, might be done. We talked about ideas of mini roundabouts. We talked about tile grading. We talked about all kinds of things. So they're going to give it one more look and see if there's anything else we can do to try to alleviate some of the accidents that are still happening up there. Um, he also offered any assistance that we need. Um, and I don't know if he's gotten with you yet, but he was going to reach out and while we're picking up pieces of things, anything that the county engineer's office can help with, they're going to. Um, they're going to be redoing Air Hill Roads Bridge next year is a big project for 2022. And I think it's the one west of Keener. I don't know what the Air Hill Bridge is, but I know I'll only be able to go home in one direction. So it's somewhere. In it's at Air Hill, Wolf Creek, Pike, and Clayton. Is that where it is? It's the one right there. Okay. They said it's called the Air Hill Bridge is the name of it. So, mm -hmm. um, but I know there's a couple different mm -hmm. little overpasses. So I'm not sure exactly which one that is. Um, I spent some time working with the road crew again and chopped up trees and helped clean up messes from some storms. And I've done a couple more classes through the Ohio Township Association and we'll continue to do that. They're gonna to continue to do webinars and um, in-person classes and hopefully get back to the in-person conference next year as a goal. So that is what I have on my report. All right. Uh, Township website, social media, and general information technology updates. Uh, continuing to update the website, Facebook page, and uh, scanning in documentation to make it available for uh, residents on the website. Uh, I've been investigating the cost of information technology improvements for the township to include a meeting camera, meeting room camera, and fixed microphones for the township meeting room. I requested estimates from two companies. Uh, one company uh, did not respond, so I'm waiting on a replacement estimate at this time uh, from a company that came uh, well referred from other townships south of us. Um, I received two estimates for hosting and website development, and uh, Ms. Kaler has uh, distributed that to the trustees. I'd like to set that up for the end of the month work session, kind of dig into those a little bit and talk about those. Um, and I collected the specs for uh, two PCs and one printer to cover the uh, maintenance garage office and work area. Uh, Chief Littleton has amended that to his submission for the firehouse grant, and I am uh, going to be reviewing the estimates that he got back from Dell here this week. Can we? change the date <coughs> session yeah. um, we can talk about that later or whenever because that tuesday night is um some a conflict with schools okay no problem okay um the <laughs> garage i met with uh mr hoots out the garage to review the uh, maintenance garage needs I'm looking into a new phone setup to cover both the back office and each one of the bays uh, with a wireless phone setup. Um, discuss the need for ventilation to improve the airflow out there. Uh, he's going to be looking into what what the part of the possible is, and then bringing something to us for us to discuss and see what we can do. Um, 
in the roads and cemeteries, I've continued my weekly inspections of the roads and cemeteries, as well as nuisance properties uh, for the zoning administrator. Uh, I looked into and researched the use of H House Bill 110 funds for police use. I think I sent you that email. Um, that may provide some funding for some of the stuff that we need. We'll have to get down into that a little bit deeper. And I also did research into the America Rescue Plan funds for the townships and uh, forwarded that information to Ms. Kaler to be distributed to the other trustees so that we could have a discussion here in the near future. And that is all that I have. Okay, uh, let's see. I helped uh, with cleanup after one of the storms, and I helped at the maintenance garage to fix up an issue with Spectrum. Uh, I've been helping Ms. Kaler with some of the trash bills. Uh, I've been here at the township. I've been pulling some weeds and things like that. And been in contact with State Representative Bobby Creech, uh, and he also gave me the information on this order, which I distributed tonight. Um, working with I was working with Ms. Kaler on the possibility of getting a dumpster for used tires over there. And um, let's see, um, Chief Littleton and myself went to a council meeting in New Lebanon. And also, I would like to thank Ms. Kaler for um, painting our front lobby. And also, thanks to Chief Littleton and his officers for their assistance with the burial of the out of state police officer. That was very good. Thank you. Yes. Um, so we have new business listed next. However, as a point of order, uh, old business usually is supposed to go first. Um, at least according to Robert's rules, it says that old business goes first. So that being said, Missy, do you have any new information on the Wolf Creek watershed? No, I have not heard a word. Okay. No. And Jerry, I need to get with you and see if there's any files or anything. And maybe can you have something in there? Oh, uh, there's handling there. Is this Wolf Creek? Okay. Uh, after that, yeah. Okay. I'll come down with you if you don't mind. Sounds great. Because I'm under the impression that was supposed to be starting, but I think they postponed it. Yeah, they postponed it a couple of times now. Okay. Um, the other thing in old business is the retreat program is coming up and there's some flyers sitting up there. If anyone needs a tree replaced from the tornado, or if anybody wants to volunteer to help plant the trees, Brookville, Clayton, Perry Township, and Trotwood are all going to be doing their tree planting on September 25th. There's going to be like a kickoff at Sycamore Park where all of the volunteers will be given whatever tools they need, instructions on how to plant the trees and the trees. They'll be given the addresses and then um, any trees that are not planted or if they don't finish up on the 25th, the plan is to uh, regroup on the 26th and do that. And whenever that's done, they're supposed to be gathering again for some little yay, we did it celebratory thing. Um, that location hasn't been announced yet, but as soon as we get times and everything set in stone, then we'll have that information to share, hopefully by the next meeting. Um, that was- I have two other things. Yeah. Um, the, uh, has there been any movement on the uh, archway for Pleasant Hill? Have, have we met with anyone on that yet? Okay, yeah. that's still- Yeah, it's still- I figured I wanted to give Caleb a little time, but I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, I know Caleb. Yeah, yeah, we just talked about it on Monday. Yes. That's the area we're looking at it. Okay. Try to get some ideas going on that. Okay. Excellent. And uh, the last thing that I had was uh, the guy from Liberty Mutual. He's been oh, very yeah. persistent in calling. Um, <clears throat> do we have an opinion on whether or not we have a need for that? I don't think we have a need. I mean, nobody has really jumped up and shown exactly. an interest. And we've given it plenty of time, and no one spoke up. So uh, I'll just let them know that. There's no interest okay. at this time. Um, that's all. Did, did we return that money for the grant? We did. Okay. I actually, I got the letter last yeah. week okay. and I put it on Charity's desk so she would have it for a while. Um, let's see. Um, 
and moving on, do you guys have anything for new business? You want to jump into the ARP we got from Mr. Creek? Yeah, well. This is going to be a longer conversation than yes. tonight, but just to. And I have some quick new businesses, but you want to do this first. We want to table. We, yeah. we table this until the work session at the end. Yeah, that's fine. Because this is just you know. We're still adjusting so, a lot of information yeah. from Basically, the Treasury. Basically, we are going to be receiving some money from the American Rescue Plan Act, and what had happened with that is it was originally designated throughout the entire state of Ohio. When the verbiage was written, they didn't include townships among the cities and villages and other municipalities that were mentioned. So there was a big legislative movement. OTA started a big campaign to include the townships as of last week, week before, like very recently, townships were included and we will be receiving a chunk of money. So- um, So there's two tranches that we could get. I think the first tranche is like around 157,000, and the second tranche is like 130. Right. Something. It's a total of three. 357. Or something. Something. Yeah. yeah. So um, that there are strict guidelines. We can't there use. are. Right. Like there are strict that. guidelines as to what we can or can't use it for. Right. There are a lot of strings attached, as usual, but um, <laughs> this will be a good thing. Right. And this time we're not going to sit on it and let it slip away. We're going to follow up on it and pursue it. And the Ohio Treasurer's Office is offering to help anyone who needs help with the registration through the portal, walking through the steps that they've laid out for how to register on the portal and, and put in for the funds. So there is more help this time too. It's not just you're left to your own devices and they ended up waiving a bunch of, right. of stuff that they required. So. Um, we will be looking into that, and that will be something that uh, here in the next couple of weeks, because I think the deadline for that is, uh, I see it's in the early fall. The yeah, first I don't trial. remember. The first, yeah. Right. The first one, I don't remember what it was, it but I know it's, we have to before next month at least show that we are going we to have an follow interest, up yeah. on it, like show our intent, yeah, like December 31st. Yeah. Well, that'll be coming up. And the dates are in our emails from the OTA. Right. I think we've got all the breakdown of that. So that was very good news. Um, you guys have any other new businesses? Okay, the only other thing I wanted to bring up in new business is uh, there has been a lot of conversation lately around the township regarding whoever is making big booms at 9.30, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Chief Littleton is now aware of it. Um, that has led to some questions about gun ranges in town. Just to clarify, I know of three NRA inspected and certified gun ranges, one of which is also a USCCA gun range. And there are four or five qualified instructors that live within our township that have their own ranges. It's permissible to do that. So I know there were some comments about the last administration, the previous administration, this, that. Doesn't matter who gave them permission, it's okay to do. So the gun ranges are there. The big booms at night, however, if anyone has any information on who's doing that, there are a lot of upset parents, a lot of unhappy pet owners. 10 o'clock, last night it was at 11 o'clock. Um, we narrowed it down to a couple of areas. One person, and I forgot to tell you this, actually lives on the other side of Diamond Mill. So it's not even Perry Township. But you know they've been sitting off there may be a couple people that are doing it it's a trend that's starting so you know it's not okay to do that the amount of explosive is not legal and um it's what we're looking into but as far as the questions on the gun ranges they are legal they are permissible and you can shoot in the township it's just common sense dictates you don't do it after nine or ten o'clock that's 
So at this time, is there anything that anyone would like to bring up or discuss? I had a question. You were talked about returning grant money. What grant money was that? That was the grant. We got a thousand dollars from the state and we were going to paint the arch at Pleasant Hill Cemetery. But upon inspection, it was seen to be a, a, a safety hazard. And the, arch the actually, only thing it could be used for was to paint the arch. That's all we could use. It was specifically a cemetery grant. It was only a thousand dollars and we were going to be doing a lot of in kind work with it. Um, but after we had, uh, I think it was like three, three or four different masons look at it, they said, you don't want to paint this because it's crumbling apart. Um, so that's why we're looking into what we're going to do with uh, both the arch and the fence way there at Pleasant Hill. The other question I had was, what happened about the theme of money from the tornado? I spent an extensive amount of time when I was a trustee applying for that, sending that all in, had various people review it, said it all looked good. We had done it in the past on some snowstorms. I believe the windstorm called Ike or something in 2013. We received a considerable amount of funding, FEMA money, whatever happened with that. It went to the city of Brookville. So we didn't get it from them? We got it in service as opposed to in refund or rebate. What amount was it? I don't know. We'd have to ask Sonny Keaton about that. And we didn't request that money back from Brookville? It really? was the way the paperwork was filed. We've been told that it was not ours to request. Um, there were some questions with the way the financial document and none of us were in office at that time. So we don't have that information. At what time? When the paperwork was filed. So when the payment come through, you were in office. <laughs> the payment didn't come through, though. It didn't come to well, us. You should have been finding out why. We were told because of the way the paperwork was filed during the application time. It was all the done wrong. The emergency operations center didn't have Perry Township oh, yes, on their list at all. Oh, yes, it did. I, I, I beg to differ with you. It did because I was there. I applied for it. I passed the information in absolutely. And we had done it in the past. And we were successful at receiving FEMA money for snowstorms and windstorms. So we were accurate in what we were doing, but I'd like to know what happened to that money. There's if the IRS gave my neighbor a check and said, oh, well, we gave it to the neighbor, I'd be going and saying, well, I want my check. I think somebody as trustees ought to follow up on that and see where our money's at. There's a lot of money that's missing that we're looking for right now. Really? But we don't have our previous fiscal officer available to ask. So that is also, there's a Quite a bit that's being looked for. Yeah, you know, that was quite a bit of money there that we should have been receiving in this township well, for our community. Um, I've been working with the Tornado Recovery Center, which is also handling this retreat thing. And the Emergency Operations Center in Montgomery County did not have us on the list. And no, I it was FEMA. It wasn't the Emergency Operations No, I understand, Center. but they were working together. FEMA got no, their no, statistical. No. See, numbers. there's where you're wrong right there. You were, you're working with the wrong agency. <laughs> no, I've worked with FEMA okay. also. I have spoken Well, you didn't get the money, so you weren't doing something right. <laughs> we weren't the ones that didn't do it right. Oh, yeah. No, we did, okay, it right. Out. we did it right. We did it right. No, thing. I'm not going to settle down because I I'm... Settle down. It's a timeout for me. I'm asking this. Here's the thing. We're Are you a trustee? Find, Are you a trustee? Money. I'm asking you the trustee. You need to be quiet or you're going to be escorted out. Let me answer your question. I don't the think state you, of Ohio, you don't give a shit? No, I didn't say that. I said, said, I don't think you know the answer. You're not no, a trustee. They're the ones that need to answer. There's a lot of things that you don't know. I'm asking. I know. That's what she I'm, I'm asking. She doesn't know either because <laughs> she's not, doesn't have the information. I'm trying to explain. So I here's do. the thing. We have a lot of money's missing. Really? The state of Ohio Special Investigative Unit has all of the financial records. Anything that is traced back good, bad, and indifferent is going to be reported. Anybody that can be held accountable, if there is anybody to be held accountable for anything, will be charged. That goes to trustees also. We have no control over the investigation. Charged for what? You just heard me. I'm not repeating myself. Oh, I didn't, I didn't understand state, you, though. That's why I'm asking. Investigative unit is finished with their investigation okay. into all of the financial documents and records. Everything will be made public. We have no control over that investigation. We've served three search warrants. They've all been sealed. Okay. Everything has been turned over to the special investigative unit. 
If you call and ask them, they will not confirm or deny if there's an investigation. So I'm just confirming them right off the bat, there is one. And right now we have over a tune of a quarter million dollars in this. So it's possible. anything well, it's that was not, that's or possible. wasn't is going to be reported. It's an allegation. It's not I'm not alleging anything. Yeah, what you're saying is, it's an allegation. who did I allege? You're it's saying it's right missing. Now. You don't know for a fact it's missing. You think it's missing, so it's an allegation at that point. It cannot be accounted for, therefore okay. it's missing. It's an allegation. Maybe it's so, misunderstanding. Could be where else. That's right. So could it's be. an allegation. I'm not alleging anybody did anything. No. I said not whether it can be proved or not proved. I don't care. I don't either. I just want to put things to rest, which is why the Special Investigative Unit is doing the investigation. We will specifically look for the money that you're talking about. That'd be good. If they can find it, we will get you the answer. Uh, but a lot of the stuff we don't even have the documents for because they took them. That's the best answer we Who can give. The state of Ohio Special Investigator. Okay. okay. I've said that three times. Well, you they said it, but I don't know if that's financial. what you referred to each time. That's what you no, said. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Each time okay. they have all the financial okay. information. Okay. We don't. They do. They don't have the, well, they have the records of what should be the financial information. They have everything that Rhonda left us. Let's just be blunt and put it that way. Okay. That should be all the records of all the information. Not necessarily. Because we'll just be blunt about this, Dale. We've got it on video shredding a whole bag of records. Okay. So you want to see it, we'll show it to you. You you got her shredding, but that don't mean it's records. No, they're records. Okay. She acknowledged that. You know. So you don't know what I have done and have done. You don't know what I know and what I don't today. either. <laughs> Maybe I need to subpoena you. Could be. Could be. So, but remember, everything goes out publicly. Yeah. So. That's right. There's been a whole lot of things that have gone on that should have been checked out a lot of times that were not everybody knows about that they ought to know about. Was so. anything ever brought forward to us? No. Anything yeah, some of the stuff you were involved in, and that, and, and yes, absolutely, okay. absolutely. You say so. Yep, oh, I do say so, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And if I knew the right agency, believe me, they would, it would be forwarded to them. Absolutely. So, maybe, maybe the state agency ought to talk to me. Maybe I could give them some information. Last warning I'm giving you. Last warning? I'm, we're done. You don't like to hear we're what I'm done. saying. Okay. Don't like to hear what I'm saying. One more deal. Anybody else have anything? I have a question. Um, I yeah. are the uh, I'm I'm um in in, in the fiscal officer's report. The date for the bills, how the, that we haven't paid, what, how did that happen? I'm, I'm very confused. Um, I'm not sure. All I know is that in the discovery with working with the traveling clerk, when we went in to pay like the UAN fees, we looked at 2020 records and it looked, it appears and according to the UAN records as well, we only made one quarterly payment last year the rest of it wasn't paid actually until february of this year so it kind of threw off some stuff with the appropriations because when the appropriations were done in january they appropriated for the whole year's worth of fees not taking into account that the 2020 were still outstanding so we had to reissue new pos to ensure that we had enough funding to cover the UAN fees throughout 2021. So you issued new PS. We had to issue new POs because the POs that were in place were not sufficient to cover the costs. Okay. Yeah, I have several questions. Um, so in this missing funds that you're talking about would the auditor that was <clears throat> assigned to the auditing of this 
Township, would he also be under potential indictment for this thing? I mean, we had state auditors here that went through those books. Chair, can you answer the question better about the audits that were done? Because that, I know there's two different types. What we're having done on is a forensic audit. That's where they literally look at everything. Bank records, personal bank records. I mean, they, they go through everything. So it gives a flat breakdown for everything that was spent. It accounts for every check written. I mean, essentially any township money spent where they can track to, what they can't track to, that's what the forensic audit does. As far as the other audit, that I can't answer because I don't know what they did. But it's going to be very thorough. Okay. That's what I'm hoping for. They've had it for over. Yeah. My goal is, is this. I want all rumors, questions, and everything put to rest. Well, then we ought to shut down Facebook. You know? Well, I can't do that. <laughs> but, I mean, no matter where it leads. Because that's where a lot of crap. I hope from. it shows that it was just put in a wrong column and that everything was there. I don't know. I'm not asking anything. They won't tell us until anything, until everything is done. I understand. So that's why we turned it over to the state and gave it to people that knew what they were doing and what to look for. We had absolutely nothing in the investigative part. I'm, I'm not on Facebook, but it's been <laughs> told to me that it said that things have been messed up in this township for 30 years. And the people that are saying that haven't even lived in the township for 30 years. So I'm wondering how that balances out, where that comes from. And is there just a liar in the place or what? I just well, don't know. Yeah. Well, I have no idea. I haven't lived here that long. I came to this community because I love this community. They're only looking back as far as what they can go. And let's be honest, after 30 years, you can't do anything. Anyway. Right. But I mean, why would anybody indict a township for the last 30 years when you've only lived here seven or eight? I don't know. You and would then, have to ask whoever said that. Well, I don't have Facebook. I don't know who said it. I mean, you know. I mean, I've got it, but so, I don't know who said it. Okay. That's the net. I have another question. There was a mention of the police buying some coins. Do you know anything about that? And what are they for? The challenge coin? I don't know what the hell they are. They're just coins. <laughs> That's to the tune of forty-five hundred dollars or something. What are they for? And what are you doing with them? Well, it wasn't just coins that were purchased. Um, we had purchased um, some ornaments as well uh, that was used as part of a public relations that we did with our different events. It is something that's handed out to officers for doing things above and beyond the call of duty with some things. Um, and it's also out there that people who like to collect uh, coins, they can purchase a coin. The cost of the coin is $10. It covers the cost of the coin and shipping if it needs to be shipped. Because it says on the coin, the way I understand it, 100 years of policing, and there hasn't even been a police force in Perry Township for 100 years. So they're incorrect. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. I uh, I want to ask also about police protection as far as visibility. We seldom see any patrolling done on Little Richmond Road. Very seldom. I mean, if it's once a week, it's a lot. And I'm wondering why that is. And when the cars do go by, they've got all these lights on. I, I don't know where the lights are located on the car, but they shine. You know, if anybody was doing anything wrong, they'd get the hell off the road or get away or whatever, because, you know, here comes this car with all these lights on it. And I don't know what that's all about and why we don't have more patrolling on the roads. I don't, I seldom see a cruiser out doing patrol. And, it seems like if I want to see a police cruiser, I need to go to New Lebanon or Brookville. And I'll see one of our cruisers there. I'm wondering why that is, why we don't have more patrolling of our area. Is that all of your questions? I don't want to be rude and interrupt. But yeah, that, okay. that's okay. the. So I can tell you that the officers uh, do, in fact, patrol 
Perry Township quite heavily, that on average, uh, each cruiser is driven well over 100 miles um, per ship. Uh, we have 122 miles of roadway. Now, sometimes it's, there's more miles that are patrolled because of the call for services are down that day, meaning nobody's calling 911 for assistance. So they're out making traffic stops uh, and everything else. And there's some days that the guys they go from call to call to call, that they don't have the necessary time to drive up and down each road for visibility because somebody on this side of the township needs assistance, somebody on this side of the township needs assistance. Uh, things are happening in Brookville where their officer needs assistance, or there's things happening in New London where those officers need assistance. I understand that you know there's more patrolling than just going up and down out of road. Uh, one of the things, another thing that I wanted to ask about, and this has been, I don't know, probably two years ago. I had a four wheeler stolen. I talked to you about that. I said, I don't have the information gathered yet. I don't have the serial number, the title. So, and I had pictures of it. I said, let me get that together. And you said, I'll have a man out to uh, take a report on that. And I said, okay. I said, when I get all that stuff together, I'll call you, you know, and I did that. And it's still laying on my desk. And I have never had anybody yet come out to take a report on a stolen four-wheeler. And I've kind of thrown my hands up on the thing because I'm really kind of disappointed in what's going on with the cop shop and our police department. And uh, to this day, I hear about, well, what are you doing? We're out here checking at the pawn shops and what have you. Well, what the hell are you looking for if you're not even knowing what has been stolen? And here, you know, my four wheel has never been investigated, never had a report on it, nothing. Well, I don't know why to, that is. According to the conversation, you're right. We had a phone conversation. You didn't have all the stuff gathered. Right. And I, I can see somebody out there and you said, well, Tim, I don't have all the, the stuff as of yet. Right. I said, okay, well, let me tell you what, Mom. You get all the stuff together, up, get your title, get your VIN, and stuff like that. And you let me know, and I'll send somebody out. I never got a phone call back, sir. And here's the thing you don't have to call me directly. We have this thing called a dispatch center. That's what I call. And you can call there and let them know what you need. I did. And they will send an officer. I did do that, and I left a message that I had talked to you about it. You know when called? It was like two days later. Because I, I went through my files, I got everything, all the information there, and I called and told them I got no response. None. Well, I'll put a request into Montgomery County Regional Dispatch. Um, I'll need to narrow down that date, and I will have them pull their phone records and call logs to see if they called in. That's right. And then if you did, then I'll get to the bottom of why somebody didn't come out. Well, I'm giving you notice right now. I have that information for you. Okay. At this late date. So okay. maybe we can just get somebody out there to check it out. Yeah, yeah we, we can get a report on it. That we can do. I think that's all I got for right now. Well, I don't mean to interrupt again, but while you're on the dispatch thing, are, is there a problem without that? Because I, I, we had an accident about a year ago, and it took us four to five minutes to get anybody out there. And it's not, I'm not saying it's the township's fault here, but it's through dispatch. It was awful. Thank God this guy wasn't hurt bad, or I'd have had to do what I could do. I mean, we just couldn't get anybody. It took 45 minutes. We finally got Purple County 911. And it's like, I don't know if you're hearing that or not, but something it is a problem. It's a problem. And I'm not the only one to say it is a problem. I have, I have heard that issue. Um, and I am working with um, two people or two agencies, the Inglewood Dispatch Center. I'm looking to get information from, from there to how much it would be for police dispatching. Um, New London dispatches through Inglewood, Brookville. So we know that the townships divided up between those two. And the E911 system doesn't differentiate if you're Perry Township and you need to go to Montgomery County or New Lebanon or Brookville and you need to go to Inglewood. So when you call, no matter where you're at in the township, it takes you straight to the Inglewood Dispatch Center. Then from there, they do one or two things. One, they can either transfer your call directly to Montgomery County or 
they take the information, they hang up the phone with you, and then they call Montgomery County and give them that information. So there is a big time lapse. Now, there is a big time lapse. And when I say a big time lapse, from what I have seen, anywhere between three to six minutes from the time that you call 911 and it goes to Inglewood, by the time they get that information, transfer it down to Montgomery County, Montgomery County and then work dispatch. That's crucial time, depending on what type of call is coming in. This is why when Tim, you said you were going to check the records with the dispatch. That's all well and good, but I don't trust what you find. I just don't trust it because I guarantee you, and I had an, an episode with 911. There was a, well, that's not a deal. You know, this, this follow up thing, like my neighbor down there had a theft. The police showed up. And left. They didn't ask the neighbors if they saw anything. They didn't ask them if they had any identification of the vehicle. Here was a man right straight across the road from this house that got burglarized that had the make of the truck, the taillight that was out, the guy's <laughs> description that was in the truck that stole the tools right across the road and the police didn't come over and ask them if they saw it. What kind of police work is that? I mean, I don't want, I don't want to be the top complainer here, but damn it, I live in this community and I want the projection that I'm paying for. And, and to me, it's negligent on the police department's part not to go ahead and try to investigate thoroughly by asking the neighbors, did you see anything? Have you got any information that would be beneficial? I have no doubt if you had the make of the truck, they had everything except the license though. A tail light out. That's a dead giveaway. You know, and there's been some, uh, I'm going to go into that. Anyway, I just feel like that there should be some um, Shaping up a little bit of what's going on with the police department. I mean, well, you're in, you're in let, control. let me let me finish the dispatch situation. Okay, that's important there because so, you were at the one, mm -hmm. and I had called because the forklift fell on the guy. And I will say that day we had fast response. Thank God we had fast response because that was a bad situation. And but I, I don't know what differs. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's awful. And That's I, what needs to be looked at. And I agree with you there. So Perry Township pays. I think I put the opposite of what I'm going to let you know. I think it's like $40,000 a year for dispatch services. Yep. Um, and if, as a citizen, if, I, if I'm paying into this and I know that the department or the township is paying $40,000 a year for dispatch, I shouldn't have a three to six minute delay of being transferred and information gathered and then someone's finally dispatched. That's that's not good service from a business standpoint. Right. So digging in and getting with Inglewood, there's about a 50% cost savings with going to Inglewood dispatch. I've been told that we have a contract with Montgomery County with the regional dispatch. It took some time, but I finally tracked down that contract. The contract is very vague in what amount is to be paid for how long and what the conditions are of coming out of that contract, with the exception of one thing. And that's you have to give a one year notice. Okay, so I'm still doing, I'm still doing the, the research on this, but I've spoken to some of the trustees um, that, you know, once I get hard numbers in writing from Inglewood of what it would cost to change over, and what I'm talking about changing over, we don't need new radios, it's just a reprogramming of the radios that we have to point the IP address to look somewhere else and not at Montgomery County. Um, so I need that cost. That would come from PNR, who services our radios. So 
but I have to get hard numbers from Inglewood. You know, how much do they charge per dispatch? Is it eight dollars? Is it nine dollars? Is it twelve fifty? And I have to compare that to what Montgomery County charges us. But right now, based upon our call volume of twenty five hundred calls per year, I was giving a rough number of twenty thousand dollars to twenty two thousand dollars a year. That's almost a fifty percent savings. If that is in fact true, it is a no brainer that we switch over to Inglewood. One, from a business standpoint of saving money that I could use somewhere else in the budget, but also it gives the residents of the township a better police service of getting somebody at your house sooner rather than later. Now, there are some extenuating circumstances that come into play. You know, we talk about patrol. I have 24 hour coverage, seven days a week. Five days out of those seven, I run two cars per shift. Okay. So for two days, there's a single car per shift. I can't go any further with that with the, uh, the current budget that is given. And here's what I mean by that. So the last levy that was passed, and I'm sorry if I'm stepping all over your toes. The last levy that was passed, I don't know how that number came about, okay? But there was a number that was put out there. I don't think, and I'm not pointing fingers, I'm not looking to point blame. These are simple facts. Nothing was calculated, in my opinion, of how much it cost to hire somebody. I have that cost breakdown, and I'll be more than happy to get it out. But by the time that I paid an officer to sit down to do testing, to do a background, to do interviews, and do all these things, that adds up. There's that cost. There's the cost of uniforms. There's that cost. The cost for fuel, the cost for all of the bills here that is split from the police department. And I'm not complaining about splitting those bills. We use the building and everything else too. But not everything I don't think was taken into consideration. So to get two more people on the road full time with benefits, paying uniforms, paying the training, and maintaining the equipment, that costs extra money. I don't have that right now. It's not in the budget, no matter which way I try to slice it. I could reduce dispatch fee. I could reduce this, I could reduce that, I can apply for grants, I could do all these things. But at the end of the day, it doesn't replace and keep those two individuals there as a second car for those two days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I understand your own financial constraints. I understand that. Uh, and I appreciate what you said, and it makes sense to me. I have another question, too. We're talking about a, a fire lighter here. My wife and I went to Richmond few nights ago. When we came home, <coughs> smoke detector was going off. That's smoke and carbon monoxide. And what else were we? Oh, we had two individuals. One one was a uh, smoke detector, the other was carbon monoxide. Both of those were going off. That's kind of scary. And I said, I said, I don't know how this could be because the furnace isn't running, of course, warm. We have a water heater that's an instant water heater. It doesn't fire unless you, you know, need water. So it didn't make sense to me, but I've still wanted to feel okay with it. So I called the fire department. 48 minutes later, they got there. They could have walked in with a handheld sniffer to see if there was any fumes, gas, what have you. I know about these things. They brought a EMS truck, one of the big, not a tanker, but one of the big fire trucks, and I think another vehicle. And two guys came in with a handheld sniffer, checked things out. They said, well, just a, a fluke. Both of them went out at the same time. Now, I've since replaced both of those, but 48 minute delay and bring three pieces of equipment. And they want another levy. I mean, geez, you know, I mean, I don't understand that. Do you, can you shed any light on that about why 
I mean, I see a little little fender bender accident, and I see a ladder truck there. I mean, what what is that about? I can't speak intelligently on how the fire department does their operations and what pieces of equipment they need for each run. It would be unfair for me to answer for them, just like it would be unfair for them to answer for me. But do you think it's an unfair question to ask? I don't think it's an unfair question to ask. I'm just not the guy to answer the question. Uh, in answer to your question on the there were two. On the what? The thefts. I know who put your neighbor's pools. I know where they're at. Not the pools, but I know where the people are. We had two separate groups working from the first of the year. Actually, since are they incarcerated? Is that what you're told? Some are, some are. Once we're off camera, I'll be more than happy to fill you in on who is where. But I can tell you that the one group is no longer, two of them are in the state of Ohio, the rest are out of state. Just to enlighten you a little bit on, on the county dispatch, the reason that happened some years ago, they basically came to us and they wanted everybody on the same system. That's why we were on Inglewood. So we switched. That's why we switched. And that's, so now, yeah, it's a bad scenario down the road here. Well, or, or, or not as good, but that was the reason for it. At the time, like everybody's gonna be on the same dispatch. Everybody's gonna know what's going on. Hey, this sounds great. Well, sometimes things don't always. So I, I guess I, I guess it was a bad decision, but it seemed like a good one at the time of what they were presenting to us. I mean, they basically come to us. And I heard that they, they approached us. And I heard <laughs> that they pretty much just showed up and dropped the equipment off. That's and, and that was it. Um, like you say, the you just said it. I can't remember the 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 radio. That it's just a matter of changing the. The frequencies, the frequencies in there and stuff yeah yeah that's that's what's all yeah. well i think when you're talking about 911 it's not about the expense it's about the expediency of getting people there and you know how many 911 calls do you really get and is it and are they all based on emergency so and i mean you probably have no way of knowing if they're emergency or not but the thing is it's about expediency from the time the call is made to the time someone shows up. That's the important thing. And I don't give a damn if it's twelve fifty or seven dollars or whatever. It's still very important that in an expedient manner somebody show up to find out what's going on. So you know, I agree. And then if you have if you have multiple people calling in on nine one one, let's say for example you got one in Fairmont and one. Um, let's say over here at Diamond Mill at Old Dayton. Uh, what is that, Vogels? So let's, let's pick Vogels for a second and let's pick Longhorn Fat Shop. There are two businesses that everybody knows where they're at. If my officer is down on Lower Richmond out by your house and they get a 911 call to Longhorn Fat Shop, well, let's say they're on their way there, but then all of a sudden somebody from Vogels calls in two different completely you know, scenarios. The 911 you can call the evaluator is gathering that information and then based upon their guidelines and the information that they attain, they have to make a decision which one has more of an emergency over the other. Let's say somebody broke into Longhorn Fat Shop, but let's say you got somebody that's not breathing over here at Vogels. The person at Vogels isn't breathing is going to get the attention before Longhorn Fat Shop does. Those are two examples. So, so if I got one officer on, they're going to the person not breathing. So you may have to wait if you're at Longhorn Fab Shop. You may have to wait a little bit longer for my officer to get there. So it's actually the discretion of the dispatcher or the officer. I don't. I, I don't, I don't know if it's so much the discretion. I think it's that they look at everything at, and the information that they're being given that they're asking. I well, does, that, does that dispatcher say to the officer? We got somebody not breathing, and we got to break in over here. Well, make your mind up what you want to do, no, or do they say it's more important to go here than there? That's Does the dispatcher do that? Is that their job, or that is their job based upon their guidelines and the stuff that they have received from from their agency? I might be able to help with that a little bit. Um, at regional dispatch, 
um, with Montgomery County at least, and I'm, I'm not sure with Englewood, I'm not real familiar with them, but I'm very familiar with Montgomery County Regional Dispatch. They have what's called a CAD system, computer aided dispatch, and it's very similar to what the officers have in the cars. When they get a call type, they type it into their CAD system, and there are certain keywords and certain typing um, constructs that the computer recognizes. And there's an algorithm where it will assign it a priority code. One's a priority one, one's a priority two. There's um, code words like the officers can say, I need something on a hurry up. That means bump me up in the priority list. There, the dispatchers sometimes are at the mercy of that computer because they've typed in burglary, theft, whatever, officer, car three is being sent to burglary, theft, Longhorn, theft shop with the address. This other call comes in and they type in, I received a call not breathing. And keep in mind that I think there's 12 dispatchers sitting around regional at any time. So there's a bunch of them typing to the system all at the same time. Somebody answers a call, Jason could be sending the person to the theft on Longhorn Fab Shop. I answer the call for the not breathing person on the other side of the township. I type that into my computer and it bumps the call on his computer. So then the dispatcher sees where they're sending their officer. Um, the dispatchers sometimes, if they're good and they know what's going on around them and they can listen in on everything, they may be able to get more information and bump it up in a priority. But a lot of times that's done by the computer because it's got keywords like burglary versus not breathing. And it automatically trumps the previous call. Okay, one other question, Tim. I know that you're fair, and I, I'm a fair officer. One of your officers recently asked a man sarcastically, are you a baby killer? And you heard it. Was that man ever disciplined in any way? Did you ever corner him and tell him that you're never supposed to speak to somebody like that? It's not very good representation for you or this outfit. Correct. That is something that is being dealt with and handled. I'd like to know the outcome of that. I can let you know that, sir. I appreciate it. Anybody else? Oh, I have a plethora of things, but I'm not going to break my pants, good buddy. <laughs> No one has anything else, then I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Trustee Hartshorn? Yes. Trustee Wynn? Yes. Trustee Morris? Yes. Thank you, everybody.